Here's a voicemail from one of our listeners named George. Hello. What would you say would be the greatest sin of America today or uh, maybe the greatest sin of the church? And I would just say in general that, you know, smartphones, new technology, uh, that that has taken the place of relationships. And I think that um, God's will is relationships. You see it in the Bible. In our country today, I see so much a lack of concern for other people, compassion for other people, integrity, respect. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, so it's a um, a really good question. Something for us us to think about. You know, like what what is the greatest problem or threat facing the church today? The greatest the greatest sin. Um, and I'm guessing you know you, you'd get different answers depending on who you asked. I, when, when I look at the scriptures, um, Paul in in his letter to Timothy, the second letter that he wrote, he says in, in in chapter three, understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. And, and, and as you as you hear this, tell me if you don't you don't think this is um, you know what we're experiencing today. He says people will be lovers of self. This is the first thing he mentions. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. And and Paul says to Timothy, look, avoid such people. Um, It's interesting to me that the the very first thing that that Paul mentions there is that they will be lovers of self, this this self-interest. And and, and you brought this up, brother. You said, look, it just seems like people don't care about others. Um, we, we don't have compassion. Um, this is a, this is a serious thing. We, we, we've basically, I think one of the, the, the greatest sins of today is this sort of idolatry of self. And I think we see this in the church, but I, I think we just see it in, in, in broader culture as well. Um, and there's something very heinous about this. I, you know, in the book of Jeremiah, when God is talking about the judgment that he's going to bring against his people, listen to what, what, uh, it says in Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 10, when you tell this people all these words, and they say to you, why has the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Why is God judging us so harshly? What is our iniquity? What is the sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then you shall say to them, because your fathers have forsaken me, declares the Lord, and have gone after other gods and have served and worshiped them and have forsaken me and you have not kept my law or have not kept my law and because you have done worse than all your fathers. For behold, every one of you follows his stubborn, evil will, refusing to listen to me. Listen to this right here. He says, look, your fathers, they they forsook me. They they went after other gods and bowed down before those, those false gods to worship them. You've actually done even worse because you know what you worship? You know what you've gone after? You know what you follow? your own stubborn evil will. In other words, you've turned yourself into the idol. You're just a lover of self. And I think, you know, in our sort of, you know, affluent Western society, um, this is one of the, if not the greatest sin that, that people struggle with and that in the, the church we can struggle, we, we just think we're the center of everything. Um, worship of self, love of self, putting self before everything and everyone else. And isn't this the very opposite of Jesus? I mean, it really is, in in one sense, the spirit of the Antichrist, because it's the opposite of Jesus and what he was like. You think about what what Paul said to the Philippians in Philippians chapter two, um, where he talks about the 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 humiliation of Jesus. Jesus is coming to earth, and he says, Philippians chapter two, verse four: Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death 
on a cross. Um, and that's really a, a beautiful picture of the gospel, but it, it just goes to show us how much that, that sort of self-love, self-centeredness, idolatry of the self, um, you know, the expressive individualist, the, 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 it's all about me and I'm the one who um, creates my own destiny. And, and basically God, if he exists, exists for me and for whatever I want. Um, that's one of the big problems um, that people have today. We need to go back to not the sovereign self, um, but the sovereign God uh, who forgives our sin, who forgives our idolatry, and who did so through the humiliation of his son, Jesus, who assumed human flesh um, so that we who loved ourselves might be forgiven and might in turn love the people around us and, and more than that, love God with all of our hearts. So thank you for that question. God bless.